Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We are uh, this whole uh, episodes, uh, the series of episodes is about taking a stand for God, standing firm in your faith. I urge you, my dear brother, my dear sister, when you honor God by standing firm for Him, I can assure you He will stand for you. There is no doubt about it. Hallelujah. So it is so important for us to understand that when I take a stand for God in my practical life, in my faith walk, He will take a stand for you and ensure that every blessing that you need will be upon you, showered upon you. That is why the word of God very clearly says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all the things that you need will be added unto you. It will be added beyond measure. Because God says very clearly that He is a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly much more than you can ask or think. And He is a God who gives you well pressed. You know, it is filled, pressed and overflowing. His blessings will be there. Hallelujah. So when you, when you put a trust in Jesus and you need not be, you don't have to be ashamed. Hallelujah. So when you put your trust in Jesus, actually you are bowing your knees before God, Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I can assure you, if you, you can opt, if you, bow, if you decide to bow your knee before the Lord Jesus, then you will never have to bow your knee before anybody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, my dear brother, my dear sister, it is so important for us to ensure that we stand for God. So God releases His blessings in and his favor and his goodness and his loving kindness and his tender mercies upon you beyond measure hallelujah hallelujah that when, so like i told you when you take a stand for god he takes a stand for you one of the things is you know the loyalty of your heart god is a discerner of your heart man might be take, fooled by the external things that you do you may appear to be very good you may do this and that but God is not looking at that. God knows the innermost heart, the innermost thoughts and desires of your heart, the purposes of your heart. And when you are loyal to Him, when you have single-minded loyalty to the Lord, and when you are totally surrendered to Him, the Word of God very clearly says in Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, the eyes of the Lord are roaming all over the world to appear strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to Him. So I urge you, my dear brother, my dear sister, whatever be the circumstance that you are going through, take a stand for God. Take a stand to rely upon God's word. And then he will, have, he, will, he will come down. His eyes, see, once his eyes are upon you, then it says to appear. He will appear. It is not that he sees, like you watch a football match. Are you with me? You watch a football match, you are sitting in the stadium and they are struggling to go, score a goal. It's not like that. So when you are loyal to him, he says, he, he will come down. So he says very clearly, the eyes of the Lord are roaming all over the law, all over the world. To appear, he will come down into the field. To appear. And on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal. So in a football match, you can say, he will come there and shoot the goal for you. I hope you understand me. I'm just giving an example. So the God who was sitting in the stadium... When he sees you struggling to shoot a goal, he will come into the stadium and uh, into the playground and shoot the goal for you. I mean, I'm just giving an example. It might be, you might think it is a stupid example. But I sort of understand this, that he will come and enable you to achieve what you want to, according to his plan and purpose, according to his perfect will. So you need to understand one thing. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be there by your side. I mean, he is a God who is so faithful. Because if your heart is loyal, his heart is more loyal than that. That is why we read from the book of Timothy that, you know, I think we should read that, you know, the heart of God. How, how he tells us, loyalty is, like, just like you say, God is love. Love is a nature of God. Similarly, you also need to understand that loyalty is a nature of God. When you read the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 11 onwards it says this is a faithful saying for if we died with him he shall we shall also live with him if we endure we shall also reign with him hallelujah if we deny him he also will deny us if we are faithless he remains faithful 
he cannot deny himself. So faithful is also another form of loyalty. So loyalty is a very nature of God. So he will honor those who are loyal to him. Of course, he is always loyal, but he will honor those people who are loyal to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, again when you read the word in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 6, it says, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So, God is actually telling Joshua, be strong and of good courage. It actually means be, you know, strong and courageous is actually twice, you know. Strength, strong and courageous. So, unless you are strong, you cannot be courageous. Unless you are courageous, you cannot be strong. So, you know, these are two, two things which go hand in hand. It's like two sides of a coin. So, God is giving us a command. He says, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So, there must be, God has called each one of us, chosen each one of us for a purpose in our life, in His, in his plan. And when in the, in the case of Joshua, it was to divide, to take the people across because Moses could not, I mean I am not going to do that, could not take the people into the promised land. That was the original plan but you know, he did not honor God and therefore you know, he was, could not take the people into the promised land. He could only see it. And Joshua was the one who took the people across the Jordan and took them into the promised land. And the purpose was to divide the land flowing with milk and honey between the 12 tribes. Not the 12, only 11 got it. That's another thing. Okay, we'll, that's another talk altogether. So we need to understand that the purpose of God was Joshua should lead his people into the promised land and to divide the land. So that is the purpose. And to achieve that purpose, to ensure that it is fulfilled, God will release his favor upon him. Similarly, in our own lives, to achieve the purpose of God in our own victory, individual lives God will release his favor to ensure that you are strengthened you have the courage so God is actually telling him I have already prepared it for you I have already given it to you but you have to appropriate it you have to appropriate it in faith and therefore God is telling be strong and of good courage because I have blessed you I have anointed you to do one thing for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Similarly, God has given each one of us a particular purpose in our creation. He knows this is the very purpose. And it is only the fulfillment of that purpose which will give glory to God. Because each one of us has been created for the very specific purpose of glorifying God in our lives or by our lives. And it is only the fulfillment of that purpose that will ensure that we give glory to God as you ought to. That is why Jesus himself again in the, in the book of Gospel of John 17 verse 4. He says, Father I have completed the work that you have, you have entrusted me and I have glorified you in this earth. So even Jesus was given a specific purpose for coming down into this earth. And it is a fulfillment or the completion of that work which gives glory to God. That is why when he finally died on the cross at Calvary, he stretched out his hands and said, it is finished. It is finished that the salvation work of, for the whole of humanity has been completed and accomplished. It is finished. There is nothing more to be done. Amen. So today, my dear brother, my dear sister, I want to urge you that for your salvation, there is nothing more to be done except Hallelujah. Accept. Accept. Are you there? E-X-A-C-C. Accept. Accept. The finished work is at the cross of Calvary as the only means of your salvation. Hallelujah. Then you will find how strong you will be. Hallelujah. So God is again telling Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. So earlier you said in verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Now again he was repeating that. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to this, to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper and have success. Or it says act wisely wherever you go. Amen. 
So God is giving us the, 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 the way, the method of being successful in life to inherit every blessing that the Lord has given us. And God is giving us also a, an admonition that he says, only be strong and very courageous. So all that you need to do is to be strong in the Lord. It is a strength. It is a power of God. And to be courageous, not to be ashamed of, in the gospel. That's why Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is a power of God unto salvation for whosoever believeth, both for the Jew and the Gentile. Amen. So you need to understand, it is this reliance upon, upon, the, upon the word of God that gives us the courage. And when you have the courage, God strengthens you because it is the power of God. So my dear brother, my dear sister, in our Christian life, in our even worldly life here, in your business, in your family life, in your relationship with others, in whatever you do, be strengthened in the Lord. Be of good courage. Do not fear. Hallelujah. It says, be strong and of very good courage. Very courageous. Hallelujah. And then it says that you may observe to do according to all that the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. He says, you have to obey all the law. The word of God says in the book of John, the gospel of John says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So it says, actually you could say, only love me, only love me. And therefore, do not turn to the left or to the right. Do not migrate. Do not, you know, deviate from my word. Obey my word. Whatever my word says, do it. Have my word in front of you. Focus. Like the word says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. That's the word of God. The author and the finisher of my faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. Endured the cross. Despising the same shame. And sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. So our focus. Our, in our walk. We must not turn to the right or to the left. Actually you would have seen these horses. Which normally pull carriages. They have got I don't know what they call that. You know, so the horse is not disturbed by the sights around it. It is only focused on the road that is in front. Because if the sight around it is also visible, then it will see something is coming here, something is coming there. Then it will go haywire. It will run amok. But it must be focused. So its eyes are focused. Do not look to the left or to the right. Do not turn to the left or to the right. But be focused, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. He despised the shame of the cross. And therefore, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Today, my dear brother, my dear sister, if you also do that, your reward also will be the same. Because you are a brother of Jesus. Are you with me? You are a sister of Jesus. He is the firstborn. Very clearly, you and I are members of the family of God. You and I are children of God. You and I are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. These are the truths which, Bible, which the religion will never teach you. Hallelujah. If they teach you that you are a son and a daughter of God, that is the end of uh, religion. <laughs> you don't need any religion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you are already in the kingdom. Are you with me? You don't need anything else to assist you to get into the kingdom. Because you already entered into the kingdom. After you become a citizen of a particular country, you don't need anybody else to help you become a citizen. Are you with me? That is accomplished. It is that chapa. That, okay, now you are a citizen. That is the finality. That is why the word of God very clearly says in the book of John chapter 3 and 3 verse 3 and verse 5. 3 says, truly, truly I say unto you, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. Verse 5 says, truly, truly I say unto you, unless you are born of water and of the spirit, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. So once you are born again, a born again person is referred to in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Whosoever is in Christ... Is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. The old man who was, in, who was born in the image and likeness of Satan. Adam sinned. Then his lineage changed. His father became the devil. Read John 8.44. Write it down. There is a devil also who is a father of the people. Jesus Christ himself says that. And therefore you died to that lineage. 
you died to that parenthood and you are born again with a spirit of adoption with a spirit of god in you residing in you and you became a new creation in the image and likeness of jesus very clear my dear brother sister the book of romans chapter 4 verse 16 says the spirit of the living god has revealed to us that we are sons and daughters of god hallelujah so there is a new creation he says so do everything which moses my servant commanded you do not turn to the right hand or to the left hand that you may prosper that means in whatever you do or wherever you go so once you are under the lordship of jesus once you take a decision that i am going to obey god's word you will have prosperity throughout your work and also in another person it says that you will have good success you will have good success wherever you go because it is god earlier like i told you that when you obey god's word when you love him you are in partnership with god and when you are in partnership with god that is the ability of god to do all things and your faith which releases that ability in your life in your situation nothing is impossible for you because god is with you amen amen hallelujah again you need to understand the very life is because we stand firm in the lord our very life you know you need to understand today you and i are here you and i are enjoying the blessings of god because we are taking a stand for god otherwise you can imagine so much is happening all around but god will not allow you to be touched to be moved your leg to slip yes because he stands firm he does not sleep nor slumber he will not allow your foot to slip are you with me hallelujah hallelujah 1 thessalonians chapter 3 verse 8 says for now we live if you stand fast in the lord amen see you live because you stand fa- fast in the lord stand firm in the lord you know you hear about so many things happening all around god protects you definitely there will be one day according to his plan and purpose you will die hallelujah but the life that you live here will be productive will be for the glory of god he will ensure that you are blessed because god will never permit anything to come against you because he needs you hallelujah he needs you he values you hello like uh, pastor rajesh keeps on saying about you know how in our prayer in our personal time personal prayer time we should all cultivate the habit of having personal time with the lord there he says god desires our presence with him more than you desire because it's like the father are you with me look at the prodigal son Luke 15 the father was waiting for the son to come i am not saying that you are a prodigal son who is in the peak state no but the the eagerness to be with the son that is what i am trying to tell you similarly in your time of personal prayer god is waiting for you to come he is waiting much more with eagerness than you are waiting to come to the lord so he does, he does not look at how you are or who you are or where you are he just wants you to be with him because you are his son and he is your father are you with me my dear brother my dear sister so cultivate this habit of having personal time with the lord according to i mean i am not saying you know this particular time of the day this so many hours so many minutes that's all between you and god but i urge you to spend the time hallelujah according to what the lord leads you the best time would be of course definitely before the sun rises in the morning that's the best time according to your ability maybe your age your health all these things have to be taken into account god is a god who understands are you me can you imagine a father who is not at all caring for the son's condition no he is so considerate he is so benevolent he is so uh, full of tender mercies and loving kindness he understands you I don't mean to make that as take that as an excuse not to pray that's not what I'm saying so spend that quality time the lord desires your presence more than you desire his presence he values you because he paid a great price for your redemption that's why he calls you his purchased possession his special treasure 
He values you so much, my dear brother, my dear sister. Do you value God that much? Oh, it's a casual relationship. No, please don't do that. Hallelujah. Because if he has paid the price with the blood of his own beloved son to redeem you, then he expects a reciprocal love from you. That is why some people take this relationship so casually. The book of Hebrews tells about such people. Definitely, God will be offended. The wrath of God will be upon them. The book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah. Tells us what awaits such people. Take it very seriously, my dear brother, my dear sister. It says, chapter 10 verse 29. I think we'll go to 28 onwards. Anyone who has rejected Moses... This law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? These three things happen when you do not value the finished work at the cross of Calvary. These three, things, these things you are committing when you take the relationship with God as a very casual relationship. No. He paid the price of life for you. Are you honoring that? If you do not, you are dishonoring. You are saying you are trampling the son of God underfoot. You are counting the blood of the covenant as a common thing. And you are insulting the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace is Jesus Christ himself, my dear brother, my dear sister. The crucified Christ is the spirit of grace. Are you with me? Because grace means unmerited favor. And what is this favor, unmerited favor? Unmerited favor is that under normal the law, that you must pay the price of your sin or your transgression. And because you have sinned, the wages of your sin is death. So I ought to die. But the unmerited favor is Jesus died in my stead. That is the unmerited favor. So you could say that the spirit of grace is the spirit of the Lord at the cross at Calvary. It is Jesus, the crucified Christ, is grace personified. And you have insulted it. My dear brother, my dear sister, never do that. Never give on to any person, any object or thing, the glory that belongs to God. God is a jealous God and he very clearly says in the scriptures I will not share my glory with anybody. So my dear brother, my dear sister, I urge you those of you who are so fond of praying to saints you pray to the saint as an intercessor be careful. I am warning you my dear brother, my dear sister the wrath of God will be upon you because you are robbing the glory that belongs to God. Why can't you have a relationship with the father with Jesus, why do you need an intermediary between him and you? Why do you need, why do you want to be in the old covenant days of a priest or the high priest who was the only person who could go before the presence, the holy of holies, representing himself and the people? That is old covenant days, my dear brother, my dear sister. Today, the new covenant day says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 8, 2 8, verse 18, we both, that is a Jew and the Gentile, by one spirit, that is the spirit of the living God, the spirit of grace, have access to the Father. So today you and I can go to the Father just like you and I, when we were kids, we need to run to a pair of Father. We should just hold Him. We used to ask Him anything that He want. The Father would give it. If it was for our good, of course. We must have that loving relationship with God. You don't need an intermediary. You don't need any saint in between you and your father. I mean, imagine a husband and a wife needing someone else to be an intermediary in their relationship. The husband and wife is such an intimate relationship. You are the bride of Christ, my dear brother, my dear sister. He loves you. He has purchased you as he considers you as a special treasure. Then why do you need a saint to come in between your relationship? Saints are all good people. They have, I mean, I presume, I mean, I'm not making any judgment. But 
let us say, good people who lived a good life of faith, they died and they are also waiting for the judgment day. Hallelujah. Are you with me? They have no special relationship with Jesus. It is a one-to-one relationship. Today, when you read the word in the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, I want to tell you, I want to point this out to you, my dear brother. So many of the people, like I told you earlier, religion is binding you. You are under bondage of religion if you are not able to open your eyes and see the truth. The word of God very clearly says in the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, please listen to me carefully. This is Jesus Christ himself telling, therefore, he is also, that is Jesus, is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus today is beside the Father, the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. Why do you need a saint? Can you please answer that? Can you ask yourself, why do I need X, Y, Z saint? in my relationship with the Father. The only reason that you could need that is because you don't have a relationship with the Father. You don't have the boldness to come before God because you have sinned. You are hiding. You have fear. Just like the book of Genesis chapter 3, Adam hid from the presence of God because he was naked. He was naked because the glory left. The glory left because he sinned. So if you do not have a relationship with the Father, where you don't need any intermediary in that relationship, then it is an indication that you are living in fear. And fear means that you have not really understood the love of God. Which means you are lacking faith. Hallelujah. Again, one more word I want to take you. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, the man Christ. Only one mediator. God is approving only one mediator and that is Jesus Christ himself. Then why do you need a saint? Why do you have to pray to a saint? You see, you can ask people who are with you to pray for each other. Yes, that's good. But you can't pray to a dead person because you don't know his destiny, where he is. You see, I want to tell you, salvation is a personal thing. Nobody can say so and so is now with the, with the Lord and so and so is in the hell. No. It is a personal relationship they had with God. Otherwise, no one would have thought that the two robbers, out of that one robber, would spend eternity in paradise with Jesus. It is a personal relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. Both of them committed the same sins. Both of them deserve the same punishment and they got it. But one was saved, one was lost. Because one confessed Jesus at the last minute that he is Lord. He confessed his sins, called Jesus Lord. And therefore the word of God says, Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So today my dear brother, my dear sister, I want to urge you that you do not need any saint or any person in your relationship with the Father. Amen. Amen.